everybody, it's Tyler here at Championships checking in with the Texas Champions. It's 3005 Robo Chargers. This robot, absolutely phenomenal. One of my most favorite robots that we've seen so far. I mean, just look at this thing. The design that goes into this, the program that's gone to it is absolutely phenomenal. This ladder raider system that they have so far and this coral ejector is like an alien just popping out of your chest. And I absolutely love how they score throughout the whole thing. We're getting a full breakdown of this robot, everything that goes into it. I can't wait to dive more into 3005 coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. First teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest. Hey Zeus, let's break down this robot. Starting off with your serializer, just talking about like what's all gone into this. I'd love to hear as we go through this, any iterations you made, that sort of thing. Of course, the serializer itself is completely redesigned from that we did right before Champs itself. So initially, it was a lot of just like polycarbonate parts that you put in here as a way to just like act as a funnel. But there was only like a single belt, and that was it at the bottom that as a way to serialize it. Main problem was that like the coral itself would get stuck in very specific positions and there was no rollers hitting it, nothing as a way to move it out of the way unless our driver would actually move back and forth, tilting it around a bit. So what we did this time is we went ahead and redesigned it completely where it has a bunch of these polyurethane custom mold flaps. All of them spin simultaneously using one vortex motor right here. And the whole point is, every, no matter where the coral is in, if it's an awkward position, uh, horizontal, vertical, standing up a bit, it's going to hit one of these rollers and just force itself down into our ejector right here. And the main thing is just we wanted to keep the same slope that we had from the whole like back shoot that we have back here. So that way our human player, they're able to just toss it in even when we're getting heavily defense, we're able to toss it in at like such a weird angle and still be able to get it serialized and into our coral ejector. What has that done to your cycle time so far? Have you noticed like you're shaving a second off each time or anything like that? We're shaving a second off of it, especially this is most notable in autonomous in Auton when we were going ahead and like we were moving so fast trying to get that four piece so that way we could like get all the mall scored and everything that like it would sometimes fall out but with this new uh, serializer it's able to actually spin it in and like suck it in completely so that way it goes straight into the ejector and like we're able to get four piece autons so take like we're able to get four piece autons like very consistently yeah and on top of that sometimes we might be able to get like a fifth coral inside here so we can start a teleop with one already in there. yeah it's been a marvel to, to watch and even in your first match uh i mean the amount of cycles you're getting through is just so cool i uh, see on that and let's continue on i pass over to adrian talk about your uh, laterator and the uh, coral ejector as well you know as i mentioned before i mean this is i think just one of the coolest things that we've seen in rescape uh so far so talk more about the composition of it yeah of course um and so uh, the idea of this robot is having positive engagement with the reef, and so that's just making sure that whenever we score, the coral goes directly onto a branch. And so we do that by using what we call a laterator, um, lateral elevator. Ah! Um, <laughs> um, so um, we, we put the elevator at the back towards the robot so we can have a, a more like a clean uh, follow, like path for the coral to go through, um, and that gives us the ability to have a laterator. Because um, if you're more towards the front, there's like no, almost no point of having a ladder, but we want to um, score directly on the reef. And so uh, a cool little thing, iterated, iterative thing that we've done with the ladder rider was uh, adding a, a cam. And so um, with the original design, um, our week one, uh, one of the problems is that whenever we would score level four, uh, the robot would be very tippy. And so that would slow down the cycle time for level four and make um, having a three piece uh, kind of unreliable. And so to cut down on spot the shot time for level four, but also having the ability to actually do a four piece auto, um, we kind of redesigned uh, how we went about doing the laterator and the coral ejector. Um, so if you look closely here, um, this is bar that goes across um, the structure of the, the carriage for the, for the laterator. And there's like these, um, these little 3D prints that are um, springed using uh, surgical tubing. And so as, we, as the coral ejector goes back, to stowed, you can see that um, it gets actuated by the 
all passively by the, the cam. And so this allows us to have two different positions for intaking and also scoring. And so that gives us, uh, that, that shaves down time from intaking and also scoring. And so that gives us two different positions and it speeds up everything. Um, and that, that's kind of where we go through our, um, our core ejector itself. So um, if you look, we kind of, we, we thought that uh, vision would not be accurate enough to um, get us within that uh, two inches of the, the actual coral. And so we added some guides. And if you look, you can see there's a bunch of scuff marks. And that's just from auto. So if you watch our auto at all, you see that um, the, first, the first one we score kind of hits and like pivots as we move away. And that's, we wouldn't be able to do that without the, the guides. And it also helps with the teleop too. You don't have to be per perfectly aligned. Um, it kind of does some mechanical alignment for you as well. Um, but also, um, we're, we're going to talk about this later, but there's some uh, through beam sensors we have, and that's for positioning of coral, and also um, automatically firing coral whenever we go to score at a, at a, on, a, on a branch. Um, but uh, some of the things we changed was just the positioning of the, the rollers themselves. And so that's just to make sure that the, the path from intaking to uh, actually scoring uh, and being inside of the coral ejector is smooth and so not so violent. And that can cause some jamming, which is what, why we changed it. Um, but that's, that's really it. Can you talk to me about, like, in general, like, this whole thing is just absolutely wild, right? Like, yeah. so how did this even come to light in the first place? Like, when you were designing, you know, like, you're like, coming up with the robot design, how we want to accomplish Rescape, why this at all? Um, we saw some robot in three days, and a lot of them were firing uh, the coral onto the, the branches themselves. And we saw that that was kind of inaccurate. And so we really wanted to be able to know that we're going to score the coral. And so that's kind of what this design gives us. It gives us the assurance that the, the coral will be on the branches. And also gets us, um, it gets us the ability to automatically, automatically fire. And so we don't have to wait for the, for, we don't, I don't have to stand there and wait and make sure, am I aligned? Am I not? Do I fire or not? Um, it's all, it's all, we all do this through sensors and it's this quicker cycle time. And so that's what uh, these through beam sensors gets us. And the only way to do that is to have actual uh, contact with the reef. And that's what this design gives us. I mean, that's so cool for it. Now, I'm a little disappointed you didn't say that one of your boomer mentors didn't watch like a movie. It was inspired by like something popping out. But overall, I love the whole concept that goes into this. Super cool for that. Uh, let's pass over to Xavier to talk uh, more of that sensor software side that we were mentioning before as well, too. I mean, you guys have a lot of awesome uh, different auto modes you're doing. Uh, vision with the reef as well, too, how you're doing all the detection. Walk me through how RoboCharges is approaching that. So basically, on Relay, we only have one camera right in the front. We're feeding that through photon vision. And from that, we're able to find our position on the field. And from there, we split up the field on the reef into basically a pie chart. And where if the robot is in one section, only target these two reefs and the levels of those reefs. And from there, we're just targeting the angle, and the robot snaps to the angle and can always lock onto that angle no matter what. And while the robot is in any position as well. We went this way because we wanted that no matter what, if there was a coral in front of the robot between the reef, that we could always hit the target no matter what. We can also use this to calculate our distance from the reef so that we're not accidentally hitting the reef, going down onto the reef, or um, um, firing too early as well. Uh, one of the sensors in the front, the three-mean sensor, we're using that to um, actually find out where the coral is when we're intaking. We have two three-mean sensors. The inner three-mean sensor detects when the coral is actually there, and the outer three-mean sensor is multi-use, so we use that to detect when the coral is too far out and we track it back in, and whenever we're scoring on the reef. It's, full, it's almost fully automatic where as soon as the reef, the treatment sensor is triggered, it automatically will shoot on spot and retract. So all that's a completely automated process completely you automated, through, right? Yes. Really, really cool for that. Um, when you're looking at from that automation design, I, between having an operator press a button and do stuff like that, like what were your goals in terms of like how much you wanted to automate when you were approaching this? So, so one of our goals was to limit complexity. So instead of having uh, to target all 12 reefs and select which one you actually want, we wanted to minimize that as possible. So that's where we divided them up to two. And from there, our drivers only select the left or right side of the reef. And that just helps them um, just logically in their mind. And you guys are just running uh, just one driver, right? Like yes. the driver's doing every, everything on that, so they're, they're just like tapping a button and that's just essentially where it's going? Yes, so uh, we're using a different type of controller this year where it has three uh, buttons in the front here. We're using the trigger ones for L4, the middle one for L3, and the, the 
the side ones for L2, and then these bottom ones as well. We wanted to go with this way because it will be easier for our driver to actually just select, just pick one side and then whatever level you want. And then from there, that's how we went out with it. Before we wrap up, is somebody able to talk about your uh, climbing rock raids at all? I'd love to just hear a little bit more about that if we could. All right, so one, the main thing is like our climber, we did a lot of upgrading for it. So for example, it's this giant flap right here that you see. The main thing is that we know that like with these locks right here, we're able to lock onto the cage and like have a grip on it. So that way there's no chance of us falling off of it. But we knew that it would like maybe like have four seconds that it takes us to get there and climb and everything. We knew that that could be the end of the match and we need to get there as fast as we can, or we need to latch onto the cage as fast as we can. These guides are a way to push the actual cage itself into the position that it needs to be for us to actually climb. Another major upgrade that we did that we're, um, that we're really happy about is that we used to have a latch down here that would lock an aluminum tube into the gears as a way to stop it. So that way it's able, once it's climbed up, it stays in that position. The problem is it was actuated by a servo and that would take some time. And there was a couple of matches that we lost our climb because the servo didn't activate in time. As such, what we did is we added a prototype uh, stage right here that works essentially like a drill when you're locking the chuck into place. So as it's already spinning, it's in locking each time, similar to like a ratchet joint. And so that means even if we climb partially, we're not, even the time stops and we get powered off the robot, it will still be locked into place so that, that way we can still get that climb. And that was very important to us. Well, RoboCharters, we wish you best of luck here at Championships. Thanks again for taking time to tell us more about this incredible machine. Congratulations on a great year so far. And of course, I know looking for big things here at Championships as well too. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. First teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com contest. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu first to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information.